Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button, it helps a lot. And also keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are after market close on Friday, October 15th. We're going to take a look at Spire Global today. Now, if you're uncertain of what this chart is that we're looking at, go back and last night I put out a video on Spire, which was just focused on the chart. So go back and look at that, and that'll sort of point out to you what all of these uh, lines are and what this box is and that sort of thing. But let's go ahead and quickly recap the charts, and then I'll get into just some of the info that I started diving into today. I'm sure there's a lot more to unpack, but I'll just sort of share that and, you know, should give my two cents on it for whatever that's worth. But, um, you know, basically today it's showing right now that we uh, ended at $6 on the dots. It was showing $5.99 uh, past 4 o'clock, so I'm not 100% sure why it's adjusted, but um, I was thinking $5.99 was interesting because then any $6 call options would have been out of the money. But, um, you know, I guess it's six dollars at this point. But basically, on the daily, nothing for me has changed. You know, it's it's definitely wrestling with this pivot point of six twenty, right? So it's fallen below it today. It was trying to establish up over it yesterday, and to my mind, the next level of support down is five seventy nine, and even that's kind of tenuous. But um, it's just kind of wrestling with this for now. So to my mind, it hasn't given up the 620 support uh, or pivot zone is just trying to decide which direction to go, which, you know, in this instance, having gone through what it's gone through like this, it's um, not bad in my mind if it sort of consolidates for a little while here. So it started on October 6th, we'll say. And so it's just spent, you know, a week or two uh, in this consolidation phase. So if it continues to, I think it helps it helps give it an opportunity to sort of establish a floor and start building a base off of which to uh, try to recover some of the losses. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at at the moment. But chart-wise, to me, nothing has changed. Uh, full disclosure, I did take a position in Spire today because I was inspired. Such a stupid joke. Um, and so, you know, it, it gives me a little bit more interest <laughs> in it to to have some skin in the game. But from some of the stuff that I had seen and what I was reading, uh, as well as just the chart that we talked about yesterday, I thought it seemed the risk, the risk to reward seemed there to me. And so I thought I would jump in. Now, let's start with the options stuff. Um, there's some insane open interest here. I mean, being that the stock closed at six dollars. Um, you know, there's a tiny amount of open interest in um, in the money call options. And then there's all of these out of the money call options, which is crazy. And especially those who got caught, who were probably taking these positions on this run up that we were seeing, you know, here sometime in this upswing, maybe some folks took it near the top and probably with the dramatic sell off of a over 20% down day here on the 23rd. And then certainly this 43% drop on uh, October 1st, uh, that probably just made those options worth, in air quotes, a dollar. And there were just no buyers for it, right? And, um, no one was even taking a lotto ticket <laughs> on a $20 recovery at that point. And so those folks probably just remained open because they couldn't close the position because there was no one to sell it to. And probably that happened for a bunch of these in the double digits, to be honest. And so you know, the idea of them trying to finagle the price, them being market makers, finagle the price down below six to squeeze out another 1753 in $6 call options that were left open. I don't know that that would be necessary given all of this, uh, but who knows. Uh, but definitely an interesting situation from an options perspective. I mean, while we're on the options chain, we might as well take a look at sort of what's coming up. Um, so a ton at 750 for next Friday, uh, and then still a ton open 15, 14, 12, 5. Um, less this time around on the 20. I mean, this at the 20 had 6,100 from today, uh, at least this time 1567 is all um and then in december uh barely anything happening for the time being so 
Uh, oh, sorry, I might have said next week, but this is actually November. So these are monthly uh, options for the moment. Yeah. So, um, you know, we won't sort of encounter this for a little while longer, but it'll be sort of interesting to see how these numbers change over time. And um, this will be recorded and on video, so we can always <laughs> refer back to it if we need. But um, yeah, that's what I'm looking for from, from that sort of thing. Um, also, order flow wise, there's just sort of like nothing big happening, uh, meaning no large inflow or outflow at this point. And even this is like a really minimal uh, amount, uh, right? So just kind of uh, tumbleweeds is sort of what it feels like. Um, I know there's going to be more that come in, but it's showing just over a million uh in volume today, 1.8 yesterday, 1.385 the day before, and then shy of a million for a couple of days before that. Two million on that green day, which probably gave some folks hope, but you know, obviously it dropped a little bit more. All right, let's get into some of the data here. So there's this 45% drop like we talked about, and it looks from what I'm reading, and again, I'm just sort of trying to play catch up on this, and there's sort of a weird there's not a ton of stuff out there about it, which was kind of surprising. Um, I don't know why it's surprising, but there wasn't a lot. Um, but the, it seems like this 20% and this 43% uh, drop, I don't know why it says 45.5, but um, it looks like it's, you know, about for the same reason. So they basically put out uh, this, these shares that they were uh, selling, that they were putting out an, an offering of some sort. Um, and it was in it was a part of their IPO um, in order to sort of uh, lock in and secure that, and they were offering these uh, shares, and obviously it had an incredibly bad reaction twice, and so uh, it looks to me that that's what the insane pullback was for. That seems surprising to me, just in the sense of like why that would cause such a crash and so much panic i mean granted uh if if this person is correct and it's 80 million i didn't like um do a bunch of checking on these like fact checking on these things so if folks have contradictory info uh feel free to drop that in the comments we'd be happy to to take a look and and sort of go over it in the next video but i was just trying to string together sort of what i could because there's a lot it seems like there's a lot to unpack here um but yeah, I mean, this react, both of these reactions just seem pretty loony to me. Um, and, and so I, I'm interested to see like what, what else that's all about. I'm, I'm not quite sure at this point, to be honest. Um, but that was the first thing that I was looking at. And then I wanted to check in on the institutional side of things. So 15.2% institutional ownership at this point being reported, not that bad, to be honest, for uh, sort of how new. Um, Spire is. I mean, it was uh, what August seventeenth that it started trading as Spire, I, th I believe, and so um, we're just about two months in, not even quite. And uh, definitely, there's been a lot of SPACs or IPOs that have come aboard that have taken longer to get, you know, even just a minimal or reasonable institutional ownership uh, integrated into their uh, into their uh, stockholdership, and so. This to me is isn't bad, and obviously the the advantage there is that can help have some sort of stabiliz stabilizing impact on the stock because it's unlikely that they're coming in and doing a bunch of rapid trading. I mean, it's, it could certainly happen, but it's generally seen as as a more stabilizing effect. Now, here's where things get pretty interesting. So we look back at the data from NSH, which uh, if I'm you know stringing things together correctly, that was the symbol for the SPAC. Um, and here, and like we said, August 17th um, was when the ticker symbol changed from what I can tell. Um, and we have here on, for whatever reason, on August 8th, a huge spike in fails to deliver. So if you're unfamiliar with fails to deliver, basically the idea is when you have a broker transaction, when you buy a stock, to you, it looks like it's instantaneous, but that's not really the case, right? It takes a couple of days to actually settle, but usually brokers grant you that stock holding, um, and sometimes by the time it's actually available to you, um, after the settlement dates, you've already sold it. So, um, you know, what's happening in the background is basically the, uh, the seller is supposed to be then taking the shares that you bought and 
providing them to your broker. Uh, when something has failed to deliver, it's literally that they failed to deliver the shares that you purchased to your broker. And so then they become fails to deliver. If they then become aged fails to deliver, they can there can be a whole slew of um, unfortunate downstream consequences for these fails to deliver to uh, take a long time to uh, to, to fix. But um, this does look to me like it was sort of fixed pretty quickly because the other thing is um, this reporting here is cumulative. So the fact that this dropped down then really quickly to me says either that they stopped reporting on NSH because the ticker symbol was changing or that they were reconciled relatively quickly um, after after the fact. And for whatever reason, there was a delay. And there can be legitimate reasons why fails to deliver happen. The reason that we look at it is because the, um, the sort of like more, uh, I guess, evil impact... <laughs> <laughs> of fails to deliver, what it can spotlight is that there's naked short selling happening. So if there's a high short interest in a stock and somebody short sells into it, um, either a bad actor as a broker dealer, as an individual, what have you, um, they are doing that and then they don't have a share to deliver to the person. And so it becomes a fail to deliver because they've sold them something that they don't actually have it's naked short selling. But it's a way for short sellers to continue selling even if there aren't any available shares for, to be loaned to them. And obviously, that can cause a whole slew of downstream impacts. I've talked about it in my SoFi videos. So I don't want to go over it here. There becomes sort of like additional confluent events that seem um, contributing to like clear manipulation along these lines with as it pertains to Spire and this is an impact and I'll, I'll go further into detail on that but I just wanted to point it out for the time being but I think it'll be something that'll be interesting to watch and keep track of as the data for uh, Spire comes out and for now from what I can tell uh, I don't think that it's registering anything yet because of the ticker symbol change um, it should be right here where it would tell you the uh, FTDs, and I just don't see it. So uh, we're just going to have to wait. Now, on the dark pool um, transactions, this is sort of the most recent data that I can see now. This is NSH, and I looked specifically at 816, the week of 816, because it was flipping on 817. So I think that this would have been the last available data, but this is showing total shares of 126 1,876 um, happening that week. Um, and if we look at the week of 816, uh, if we just go on the weekly here, I think that they do it differently. Yeah, so uh, 816, uh, I don't know what day of the week that was. But uh, anyway, on this week, it was 860,000. On this week, it was 1.2 million. So whichever week that exactly lines up with, I just don't want to open a calendar at the moment. Um, you know, there was a decent amount going through. This is just particularly the um, OTC dark pool. Yeah. Um, and I've done a few videos on dark pools. You can search those as well. And that'll explain to you sort of the, the different um, ATSs, which is the actual term, the alternative trading systems and the different sets of data within um that on FINRA. Now, on uh, the non-ATS OTC, there was 782,000, but this is the week of 9-6. So if we go to the week of 9-6. Um, uh, again, I don't know which exactly date week this lines up with either 1.7 million, we'll say, or 1.9 million. So 1.7 or 1.9. So almost half, um, you know, we're darn close. Uh, going through on the week of 9-6, and this is for the ticker symbol SPIR um, for just that week. So there's a lot of dark pool activity happening here in the, like compared to what's happening on the public-facing market. Um, and additionally, interesting on this one, is it's just coming from two firms, um, or I guess two uh, dark pools, two uh non-ATS ATSs. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, interesting that there's that much activity happening in such a small number of pools. Um, ugh, they aren't really in pools in this sort of situation. They are directly between um, 
uh, broker dealers. But in any case, um, a lot of shares trading hands compared to what's going on in the market that you and I can see um, on those weeks. So there's definitely something interesting happening there. And it's something I think worth keeping an eye on as we sort of figure out, you know, what in the world is happening with Spire. Um, now on the short data side of things, um, Ortex today showing a slight increase, just about well, just a little over six and a half percent. But again, utilization very high, cost to borrow very high, and I have to believe that this has to do with um, the merger and the IPO taking place, and the merger with uh, NSH, I think it was, uh, with the SPAC, and then them going public via that. Uh, vehicle. And uh, we've seen this happen in, in other tickers as well, where there's seemingly a small percentage of the free floats that's being shorted, but the utilization is very high. And therefore, the cost of borrows, it gets very high because um, it's hard to locate these shares, even though the free float seems like it's expanded dramatically, which it has. But um, the ability to loan out these shares is still uh, quite small. And so it's sort of this weird dynamic of it appearing as though the um, short interest is very small, but in reality, it's having a larger impact because the utilization is so high. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I'm sort of a toe in the water in these things, and there's definitely additional layers to unpack here, um, but it's just going to take me a little bit of time because I don't have hours to sink into this uh, any day. I was going to say every day, but certainly not even any day. And um, so it's just going to take me some time to, to piece it together. But if folks are interested in, like I said, dropping some info in the comments that I could read through, that's helpful because search time obviously just contributes to, um, you know, time crunches, time constraints that I have. But not to make everything about SoFi, but I did think that this sort of has an interesting look to uh, what we've seen in SoFi. Look at the daily here. And so SoFi had its run up with the ticker symbol change here. Oh, sorry, uh, here, All right? This is June, yeah, uh, this was the announcement. Uh, this is the actual merger. So it's just interesting how sort of similar these look. And I know there's many, many more days in this, so it can look a little bit skewed-ish. But um, and there's no enormous gap here. And these were obviously for some different reasons, but not totally dissimilar. So it'll be interesting to see sort of what the reactiveness is down here. You see here, um, so if I consolidated a little bit and then had its first big push up and then earnings, that's, that's a big gap from earnings, brought it down and then was able to, to start rebuilding and has recently had a pretty solid push up. But it was just interesting to me this. But, you know, that said, there's probably a lot of SPACs. It's probably more so just a SPAC thing than anything else, that there's this sort, this sort of like uh, trajectory and then retracement. So um, I think that'll do it for this video. It's just kind of like me getting caught up on a bunch of things. So sorry if I just talked about a bunch of stuff that you know already, but um, you know, you may not have been as familiar with maybe the fails to deliver data, um, the dark pool um, volume that, that is seeing. And I do think that that's quite high. Um, so we're interested to see, to try to unpack, not really see, it's a dark pool for a reason, try to unpack a little bit of what may be going on there. It gets very speculative very quickly, but again, it's because it's a dark pool, so you don't really have a ton of access to information. Um, and and the, ac the access that you do have to information, you're getting it very late. So it's very outdated information by the time you even get it. So it's... Um, really not actionable at that point, which I guess is also kind of the point of dark pools, but um, I don't know. I have a whole bunch of feelings about dark pools. Anyway, um, you know, if this is interesting to you, please drop me a comment below and let me know um, whether or not I should continue to sort of put out videos about Spire because um, I don't want to be just sort of putting it out into no nowheresville. No, it's not a word. Just putting it out into the void. Um, but I'm going to keep watching it. If for no other reason, then I have a position at this point. So thank you for um, bringing it to my attention. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see where we go from here. But in any case, I hope that you were able to finish the week off strong. And I hope that you enjoy the weekend ahead. And I appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next video.